and welcome to Myth Monsters. My name is Erin and I'll be your host for these little snack bite sized podcasts on folklore and mythical monsters from around the world. These podcasts focus on the actual cryptids, folklore and mythic monsters from global mythology rather than focusing on the full stories of heroes and their big adventures. I'll also be dropping in some references that they have to recent culture and we can see these represented in modern day content so that you can learn more and get as obsessed as I am about these absolute legends of the mythological world. I hope you had a lovely Valentine's Day. I'm actually recording this on Valentine's Day as well, so happy Valentine's if you weren't wished one. I'm sending love to you. Unfortunately, we really don't have a particularly romantic monster this year, unlike the special we did last year, although they were very much a sexual demon. This monster is still sexual, but the opposite of romantic. So this week, for the lovey doveyest time of year, we are heading over to East Africa, specifically Tanzania and Zanzibar, for the horrible sex demon, the Popper Bower. Before I start, if you are under 18, this episode is a bit explicit in parts. As much as this is an educational podcast that I love doing for all ages, I'm not really down for exposing this kind of monster and their MO to kids without their guardians knowing. So if you're happy for your kids to listen to this one, if they do, go ahead. If not, turn it off now. I will also say there's a lot of mention of sexual assault with this monster, so if it's something you'd rather not listen to, I totally understand. The Popper Bower is described as an evil spirit that is obsessed with raping as many people as possible. Yep, sorry, I'm straight into the bad stuff with this one, I'm afraid. It is described as a bat-like creature with a single cycloptic eye, wide wings and long claws, with a very large set of sharp teeth. Very similar to a bat in most of its looks, bar the one eye, really. It, however, does also have legs, long legs, people-sized legs and a torso, but the feet are very claw-looking, much like a bird. Although... This is just in its original form. They are shapeshifters, able to transform into both animals and humans. So, of course, there's not really much I can warn you to look out for. They roam in both the day and the night. However, are much more likely to attack in the nighttime, which is what most people fear about this monster, as it's specifically when most people are sleeping. The Popper Bower is a type of shitani, which is a type of evil spirit from Eastern African countries, such as Kenya, Tanzania and Mozambique. They mostly take on the shape of disfigured animals and come in different categories. The Popper Bower are considered exceptionally evil within this lot and are associated with the bat and also dirt and sulphur. Before an attack, the victim will most likely smell something disgusting which is that sulphur that I mentioned previously that they're associated with, and find that they have general poltergeist activity within their homes. However, when everyone is asleep, they attack, which is mostly a physical assault, but unfortunately they are most known for their sodomy of victims, be that man, woman or child, and may even attack every person in the family home before moving on to the next house. And when I say next house, I literally mean the next house, the neighbours. It feeds on this stolen sexual energy and mostly favours attacking men because they apparently have the most potent of these energies. If you are attacked by a popper bower, you are advised to actually tell loads of people about it, as the knowledge of the creature in your neighbourhood actually puts them off. It also protects the victims of having repeated visits from the monster, however, of course, trying to convince people to talk about being sodomized is pretty difficult. So this monster does tend to attack in a rampage until someone finally talks about it. Also, if you deny this monster exists, you are prompting it to attack you and enrage it. So it's always advised that you acknowledge its potential involvement for these kind of cases too. Can you stop this monster from attacking though? Unfortunately, if it's got to the point of an attack, not really. However, you can prevent it by staying up all night around a lit fire with your community to reduce the amount of potential victims in a night. Or you can speak to a local shaman to bless the house, exercise it, sacrifice livestock, or you can put charms around a fig tree to completely dispel it. 
This monster specifically hangs around the island of Pemba and Zanzibar, which are technically part of Tanzania, but are completely detached from the mainland. However, this monster has been reported in the mainland itself too, so it's certainly not exempt from the spell of the Popabawa. Now, on to etymology whilst we're on origins. The word Popabawa is Swahili and comes from two root words, Popo meaning bat and Bawa meaning wing. So it very literally translates into bat wing. Now in Swahili, the plural is actually Mapopobawa, and that's because in Swahili, nouns are pluralized with this little word ma. So if you do see it written like that, that is just the Swahili version of it. But in English, it is still Papa Bowers as expected. So that's what I will be using here if I talk about them plurally. In terms of history though, this monster is actually really modern. These first sightings only go back to the 1960s, and the reason these sightings happen is pretty interesting. The most popular origin story is that in the 1970s, an angry sheikh released a jinn or a genie to get revenge on his neighbours. I did do an episode on this last year if you want more details. They're basically an angry Arabic evil spirit, but there is an episode on them if you want more. Go and have a look. The sheikh basically lost control of the monster, and it ended up becoming demonic and evolved into the Popabawa. However, this was actually made up by a non-native, and considering that Zanzibar was an Arab-run slave market, it was most likely taken from the memory of horrific slavery, with people being taken from their homes by Brits, Arabs, Persians, Indians, Portuguese, and Africans themselves, who were the most prevalent slavers in this part of the world at the time. In terms of sightings though, it seems that rampages of this monster always seem to occur during political discourse in the country. The first report in 1965 came during a revolution on the island of Pemba, then again in 1970, 1980, 1995, 2000 and 2007 were probably the biggest dates of Popper Bauer sightings. These were all years of political cycles throughout the country, and it was even claimed that the monster was the vengeful ghost of President Abid Karume, who was assassinated in 1972 by another party, or it was even summoned as a weapon by the Chamacha Mapinduzi party who started the revolutions back in the day in the first place. In 1997, a Popabawa apparently spoke to a village through a possessed girl. Unfortunately, I could not find what she said, but she apparently spoke in a deep man's voice and many strange noises were heard in the distance. The most horrific incident though was in 1995, where it was in the eye of the storm for a mass hysteria incident, where the two islands of Pemba and Zanzibar were spreading fear of the monster in the mainland, so much so that the Popabawa got credit for a whole load of rapes and home invasions across the country. After this event, Many criticised the idea of the monster causing this havoc, and stated that it might actually just be a sleep paralysis event, or they could have been attacked by western monsters such as the Incubus, Succubus or Night Hags, all of which of course have their own episodes. Of course, we can certainly see the similarities with Succubus and Incubus within this monster, a sex energy stealing spirit. However, the intentions of this monster are very clearly different. While succubus and incubus deceive people to have sex with them consensually, as they are disguised as their loved ones, and they do it to create half-demon babies, the Papa Bauer just does it for fun, by the sounds of it, and sodomizes his victims, so there's no intent for procreation here. At least the others have some purpose to this, I suppose. It's also an interesting idea that they could just be sleep paralysis demons. The victims are asleep when the assaults happen, However, it would be strange if the entire house had the same dream, right? To be honest though, can we even make an assumption in regards to if it's a sleep paralysis demon, if it's generally turning up as a bat? The problem with these kind of monsters is that they're shapeshifters, we just do not know what they could turn up as, so they could be disguising themselves as your local cow, for all who know. They could just be anywhere. Now, on to modern media. There's nothing I could specifically find on the Papa Bauer itself, however I do have some sex-based demon recommendations. I will say that most of these are 18 plus though, bear in mind, so be careful when you're searching for these. 
For art, I would recommend looking at independent stuff this week. I cannot find anything official for this monster. And there are some really cool pieces representing the horror of this one, how spooky it is. Again, though, I stress, make sure you're careful what you research. In movies, we have Siren, Conan the Barbarian, Jennifer's Body, Grim Prairie Tales, Ghostbusters, The Archangel Murders, The Ninth Gate, The Haunted, Case 39, Demon Hunter, Soul Keeper, VHS, Death by Temptation, and Tomy. For TV, we have Lost Girl, The Gates, South Park, Dark Stalkers, The Life and Times of Juniper Lee, Being Human, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, Hex, Reaper, The Secret Saturdays, Masters of Horror, Charmed, The Dresden Files, Star Trek, Torchwood, Kolchak, The Night Stalker, Twin Peaks, Dragon's Dogma, and X-Files. In video games, we have ones such as Devil May Cry, World of Warcraft, Diablo, Divinity Original Sin 2, Succubus in Wonderland, Warrior Kings, Overlord, Succubus, Planescape, Torment, Disjaya 5, Alliance of Vengeance, Castlevania, Catherine, The Witcher, City of Heroes, Darkstalkers, Dragon Age, Final Fantasy, Mass Effect, The Last Sovereign, and Elder Scrolls. Now, my book recommendation this week is Demon Lovers, Witchcraft, Sex, and the Crisis of Belief by Walter Stevens for a really in-depth scholarly approach to this subject. Or even better, you can have a look at this monster directly in Papa Bauer, Tanzanian Talk, Global Misreadings by Katerina Daly thompson for a really in-depth look at this monster specifically and actually the cultural impact of this monster too in the place that it's from. Now it's time for Do I Think They Existed? You know what? For this one, it's a wild card for me, but I don't know. I think following all of these reports, it's definitely difficult to fully say no. However, of course there is a rule that it's more likely to attack you if you don't believe it, and I'm not sure I want to wish that upon myself. I do think it's a really interesting idea though that a monster could be almost deemed political, even though it physically has no impact on politics. It certainly makes it quite unique from my perspective in regards to all of the other monsters we cover. I do also think it's plausible for the psyche to take over, much like in these mass hysteria events involving it. If you're looking out for something like this, you can totally end up seeing it in everything. I personally do that in the dark and end up psyching myself out and seeing things that I know aren't there, but my brain puts them there by literally overthinking. Humans and brains are really weird, and it totally backs up the idea that this could potentially just be a sleep paralysis demon, but as I said, how likely is it that a whole town is going to have the same sleep paralysis demon? But again, if they're inspired by reports and mass hysteria events of it, of course it makes an impact. But what do you think? Does the Papa Bauer roam the Tanzanian islands? Let me know on Twitter. I would love to know what you think. A really different monster this week, and from a culture we don't really cover as much, and it's slightly related to the holiday that's literally just gone. So we'll take what we can at this point. I really enjoyed it nonetheless. Next week, we are heading over to the east, specifically back to Japan, to look at the cute idea but horrible execution. It's the ghostly possessor dog, the Inugami. Make sure you bark like it next Thursday to avoid this monster. For now, thank you so much for listening. It's been an absolute pleasure. If you enjoyed this podcast, please give it a rating on the service you're listening on. I've got the Twitter for any questions or suggestions on what monsters to cover next, and I'd love to hear from you. The social media handles for TikTok, YouTube, and Instagram are Myth Monsters Podcast, and the Twitter is Myth Monsters Pod. But all of our content can always be found at mythmonsters.co.uk, and you can find us on Good Pods, Buy Me a Coffee, and Patreon if you want to help me fund the podcast too. Come join the fun though, share this with your pals, they might love me as much as you do. But for now, stay spooky, and I'll see you later, babes.